Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Uh, dearly beloved, this is God Seventh, Eric Cobain, and the show, as always, is Word and Spirit Broadcast. Hallelujah. It is a show which we bring to our viewers. It is an ordained program, it's a broadcast which I believe God has purposed for us to um, fellowship together as believers in the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, tonight, I have the great privilege uh, to have my own guest. Hallelujah. He is a renowned uh, bishop. You know, he's a bishop. He's a bishop. He is in the ministry. And you see, I love this man. I remember the very first day that I came into contact with this man was uh, a program that we had organized in the, somewhere Woodbridge. And um, it was called the Mega Impact. So uh, my partner, that's our, our boss, the visionary, I asked him, where do you know this man from? Because he seems to be so nice. He seems to understand what is going on. I mean, the wife too is, 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 is awesome. So what is the secret behind all these things? And he said, uh, Apostle, this man, he loves God. Hallelujah. And I said, wow, driving all the way coming to, I mean, help us in this kind of campaign is not easy. What did we give to this man? And he said, no. He said, we didn't even give him penny. I said, are you serious? In this generation where people, I mean, are always into the stuff of, you know, it's like what you give me is what I receive. What are you trying to tell me? Hallelujah. Then I realized that this man really has, you know, the heart for the ministry. Hallelujah for the work of the ministry. I mean, he loves God, and tonight it's like I'm 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 very honored to have this great uh, man of God in our midst. But just to let you know, this program is live on Facebook as well as live on um, five radio stations at a go. This is live on Word and Spirit Radio. It is also live on Racine radio it is also live on uh, run with a vision it's also live on my father radio as well as live on bahama radios so we're talking about five radio stations connected five radio stations connected at a go for the purpose of this uh, broadcast hallelujah so this broadcast is called my story his call my story his call it is called my story his call my story his call hallelujah and that the foundation of this broadcast is taken from um first timothy chapter 1 verses 12. first timothy chapter 1 verses 12. um paul said that and i thank christ jesus our lord who had enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry and look at the verse 30 he said that who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and an injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in an unbelief. And look at the verse 14. The verse 14 says that, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So the foundation of this broadcast is about Paul speaking to his son Timothy in ministry, encouraging him that despite the fact that he was subway in the past. He was a murderer. He was killing. He was persecuting the church. He was doing so many things against the church. Yet still, God had mercy on him. And he called him into the ministry. Hallelujah. So that's the basis of this program. And tonight, I am privileged to have a whole bishop, a founder of so many churches. Hallelujah. Not only in the United States of America, but in so many other countries, which I would like him to tell us himself. And... Bishop, I just want to say that on behalf of Word and Spirit Broadcast and Receive Multimedia, we want to say that we are privileged to have you tonight. So, for us to start the program, my viewers, we don't know you. I have known you for, for just a short while, but I mean, a lot of viewers want to know you. There are some listening to this program live on the radio. So, if you go to Modern Ghana, if you go to uh, um, Ghana Sky, if you go to uh, Radio Garden, all this broadcast is live and everybody is watching with us so who is bishop solomon kudo go ahead bishop 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank you, uh, Bishop Eric. Uh, <laughs> Bishop Eric, the, the first time I met you, the man, the man is always smiling. Oh Jesus. I, I, I have never seen the man the man frown before. Bessie. Yeah, what, what, wonderful man of God. Wonderful Amen. man of God. And uh and we have we have my wife and I we've just come to really appreciate and love your ministry and Amen. love what God is doing through your life Amen. and through uh the, your broadcast and each time we listen to you, you know, we are inspired and God Amen. you know gives us you know fresh ideas, you know. Amen. Uh, there are so many ways that we learn, and and one of the uh, best ways to learn is to learn, you know, through uh, the, the people of God. You know, everybody, Amen. everybody has his story. Everybody mm. has a story, uh, and uh, I thank God for uh, this opportunity to, you know, uh, share on your radio program who I am. Uh, mm. uh, actually, uh, who who I am. Uh, it's just because of the grace of God, like the scripture you read. I am what I am by the grace of God. It's not him that wills, nor him that runs, but it's God that showeth mercy. Amen. And the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, but Amen. time and chance happen to them all. Amen. And God gives us the opportunity to be able to give expression to, to his, his grace upon our life. Amen. And grace finds expression in our hearts as we open our lives to allow God to walk through us and to walk Amen. through us, through his word, through his spirit, through the ministry of song and through service and through serving mankind and being a blessing to mankind. God is, is demonstrated. The Bible said that the, the, the power of God was demonstrated as Christ laid his life down for humanity we thank god hallelujah Amen. now uh, i am i am a servant of god i am Amen. a child of god a servant of god and i owe it a duty to live for god and to live my life to please him and to live my life to give a expression to the living christ and to the living jesus Amen. and what i, I would say is that i was born in a little town called Pando. Pando is in the Volta region. That was where that was where I was born. And actually, uh, 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 I was born to Gladys and, and Wisdom Kudo. And that's my mom and my dad. And uh, 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 I am the his fifth born of six children. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> six children, so um, I was almost last. But oh, thank, almost last! Thank God, my young, my my younger brother came and saved me from being last. Praise God. Mm. Amen. Yeah. So uh, we we have two two ladies, and then uh, we have four men. You know. So okay. that 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 is uh, with our family, with our family, and uh, so uh, boys, we we grew we grew up with our mom. You know, because our, our dad. You know, travel out for a while, you know, and so for a few years he was out of the country. So okay, we live with my mom in Kolegono. Oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kolegono. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so that's that's when that's when you know we we grew we grew up, you know, and uh, so uh, my dad was not around. So my mom had had a hard time, you know, raising four okay. boys. You know, and two girls, it's not an easy, easy task, you know. I know. Yeah, but, but my mom, you know, bless, bless her heart, bless her heart, bless her heart. She was, she was a strong woman, very strong woman, you know. Wow. Strong woman stood for every one of us and made sure that, you know, everything went well with us. Okay. We, were in the, we were in the best of children, but though, you know, but he, she still loved us the way we, we were, praise amen, God. Amen, amen. So, Yes, yeah, so I grew up in Kolegono. I mean, I went to Kolegono Boys, you know, Catholic school, and you know, um, like that. We, you know, spent most of our years, you know, in the Kolegono area, you know, until my dad came back, you know. And right. they are both they are both teachers. Okay. They are both, 
they are both teachers. <laughs> my mom, my mom is a teacher. My dad is a teacher. You know. Wow. Yes, and so um, when my when when my dad came back from from the UK, so he became the principal of Accra Polytechnic. Oh, okay. You know, so we moved from Polygono to the bungalow. Accra <laughs> At least there was a change of environment. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was it was a big a big a big uh, promotion, you know. That's right. <laughs> from Kotegono to uh, uh, to uh, Accra Polytechnic, Adabraka, you know. Wow. Big big promotion, you know. So that change that change, you know, uh, our life changed. That you know our you know our attitude, our conduct, you know, it changed. It changed us a lot, you know, because there were a lot of things we learned from Kotegono. A lot of things we pick up from Kolegono, you know, okay. and, and uh, we, we, were, we were just crazy, you know. Okay, <laughs> but Bishop, Bishop, about now let's look at, I mean, the, the environment in Kolegono. Yeah. I mean, it was, it, I mean, somebody would have said that, why didn't you involve yourself in boxing? I mean, what happened? <laughs> because you, you know, know that the people around Kolegono... Like you are a prophet. Okay. Like you are a prophet because I started boxing. Oh, and, Lord! Yes, and my boxing name was Wicked Solo. <laughs> Wicked Solo. Wicked, Wicked Solo. And, and wow. you know, my, my, my trainer was Armstrong Mamudu. You know. Oh, wow. Yeah, my, my trainer was Armstrong Mamudu. And I go to, you know, the Lebanon house. That's the right. Le the Lebanon house around Tudu area. Okay. You know, that, that's why I go. That's, that's where the gym is. You know, okay. so I go, I go and spar, I go and train, you know, and all that, you know. <laughs> Wow. Well, viewers, if you just join us, uh, this is uh, my story, His Call. Uh, this is a broadcast which uh, we gather to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Paul said that, I mean, I was a blasphemer, I was a murderer, I was a persecutor, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly. Hallelujah. So Bishop is telling us his life story. Uh, Bishop Kudowo is the bishop in charge of the Agape Ministry of Churches all over, not only in the United States of America, but there's some in UK, there is some also in Ghana. So we have the privilege uh, to interview or have a discussion with this great man of God. But just to let you know, this broadcast is live on Facebook, as you can see. It is also connected to four radio stations as we speak right now. So it is connected in uh, Racine uh, Radio, What and Spirit Radio, Bahama Radio, Running with a Vision, and Our Father Radio. So Bishop, you are being heard live all over the place. So can you tell us something about your education? Um, because it is known that people, I mean, those who live around the Colo Gono area, I mean, they don't, they don't like going to school. <laughs> Did that have any impact <laughs> on your life? Did you uh, get an opportunity to go to school? Tell us something more about that. Yeah, actually, because, you know, because my dad and my mom were, uh, you know, were like edu edu educators. So oh, okay. they put a lot of pressure on us. You know, they wouldn't allow you to, uh, you know, go without education. And, and okay. you know, they will force you to, even if, if even if you are, you are uh, you know, you are daft and you can't think, they will, okay. they will force you to think, you know, because they, ha they had the rod, the king. Okay. You know, <laughs> Yeah, in, in in Ghana, we, we they don't spare the rod, you okay. know. They don't spare the rod. They make sure okay. that I mean you are in in order. And, okay. And discipline you and make sure you do the right thing, you know. Wow. And so, well, um, in my as as we grew up, I, you know, I I did a common entrance. Kit, went into uh, the secondary school. That's a high school. Okay. You know, and my secondary school was uh, St. Paul Secondary School in Denu. Saint wow. Paul, yeah, St. Paul Secondary School in Denu. And we, we, I mean, that school is known, you know, they are known, the students are known for being very notorious. Oh, very, wow. noto very notorious and very, you know, uh, you know, so uh, defiant, you know, defiant. But, you know, uh, so we, I went into that school and I mean, that, that's where, you know, I became worse, you know, I really, mm. I really, you know, became worse, you know, it's like crazy, you know, I was really crazy, you know, smoking weed, smoking this, smoking everything I can get to smoke. Wow. You know? So, yeah. so Bishop, Bishop, this is, this is the part that I want to hear. Yeah. So, because now, so right from your basic school, 
yeah. you went to let's say high school they know yes. right so they know st paul's st paul's yeah. secondary school yeah. and that was where the whole thing started <laughs> engaging yourself in so many things you said you oh, were yeah. smoking i um, mean any so any, any, anything that goes with smoke yeah and you and tested it that is smokable i smoke it so we weed was yeah. one of them weed. Oh, weed weed was too much it was too oh much. wow <laughs> cigarette yeah. just name it so you yeah. were involved in all the things so yeah. how was your school life compared to your mom being straight because you said that your mom was kind of straight i mean trying to make sure that i mean she brings this in order so uh, how were you able to i mean maneuver your way through well you know um the weed you know became like an addict you know okay uh, to the weed and you know the smoking and then the apetashi you know we're drinking the, wow. what they call apetashi the apetashi is uh, that kind of a uh, local gin you know local That's right. gin. and wow. i think they, they said they produce it with uh, what uh, rusted nails and that's what I, like. yes they, yeah that's right yeah that's true and, and some people call it kill me quick you know <laughs> <laughs> kill me quick <laughs> yeah, kill me quick. you know wow so, yeah we were on, on all that and we were like taking some drugs uh, the, the, there's a drug called karma and madrax we call it we we're, we're swallowing this madrax and karma you know and you you get you get high you know you get high because the we was not enough to get this high so we were on madrax and on karma you know and it was it was it was a terrible thing you know it wow. was a terrible thing and uh and so we we continue in this uh, uh, self-destructive life life lifestyle you know that that kept us you know and was taking us gr uh, gradually into destruction you know Jesus. but but thanks be to god that you know god never you know let go of us you know my okay. mom my mom is a staunch catholic my father is a very serious presbyterian but okay. he's also a lodge a lodge member you know oh, wow yeah and so we were we went to church with my mom and so we became catholics Mm -hmm. you know we became catholics and you know but we, we were not serious you know what it okay. what it is you know uh, okay yeah we, 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 you go, you just go to church it's a formality it's like a, a tradition you know okay. you, you don't get nothing from there spiritually mm. spiritually mm. you are just dry okay yeah. so bishop we'll get into that part but i want us to 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 Talk about your childhood life. You see, I'm interested in that part a little bit. <laughs> because look at the bishop. You see, that's why this program is called My Story is Called. You see, yeah. you see the part that I love so much is what you, you began to explain to us. So living at a place called uh, 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 Kolegono, I mean, in the midst of people that don't even like going to school, you know, then your parents being kind of straight on you, trying to groom you up being involved in boxing you know going for training and all those and you said your your name was wicked solomon right wicked solo wicked solo wicked solo, wicked solo. <laughs> hallelujah then looking at all those things then gradually gradually you got admission into the high school uh -huh. now went and everything changed so i want to know i mean was there any point that your parents you know had an idea of what you were doing in school well uh you know it was a it was a boarding institution it okay. was a boarding, boarding institution so okay. when we go when we go to school we, okay. we, we, we we live that crazy life and when we come home you know but oh. gradually i became addicted and i have to keep up with my addiction i have to support my addiction and so i and i ended up you know uh started Pifering, taking stuff from the house, selling, mm. and then buying, buying my dope, you know. Oh, wow. Dope. Yeah, so when I come to the house, you know, things get missing, you know. Things <laughs> get missing. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, th things like that, you know. So, I, I was, I was kind of, you know, but I knew that what I was doing was, 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 was destroying me. I knew that wow. I had to stop. I knew that I had to put a stop to it. I knew, I knew that I had to get out of it, but there was, you know, I, I didn't know how to get out of it. You oh. know, I knew it was wrong. I knew it was not right. I knew what I was doing was kind of, you know, against, you know, my life and my progress, you know, but I couldn't stop. Jesus. And so it, it went on, it continued, you know, until 
uh, such a time that uh, 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 there was one there was one one lady you know a friend, okay. very good friend of mine uh, okay. Pastor, Pastor Francis and okay. we went we went chasing this girl mm -hmm. and when we when we went to chase the girl the girl happens to be a member of Christian Action Faith Ministry wow and so when we we went to her you know she, very beautiful girl her name is her, her name is maria her okay. name is maria so maria maria said well if she will agree you know to be friends then <laughs> then we have to come to church oh okay we have to come to church if if uh she will agree to be friends with us so mm. we we say, oh, no problem. That's that's no big deal. No, no big deal. We'll, go, we'll go to church. You know? We'll go to church. <laughs> so, going to church, Mar Maria was the hook that God used to draw us into Christ. Jesus. And so, following Maria, we went to church with Maria. Okay. We sat. We sat at the back when the when the message was being preached. That time the archbishop was on fire. The archbishop can preach and people will stand and confess their sins. Wow. He was preaching the word we couldn't sit down. We woke up with tears in our eyes. We went to the front. We lifted our hands. We took Jesus as our Lord and our Savior. Mm. We forgot we came to church with Maria. Wow. We forgot that we had a, a distant, an appointment with Maria. We had an agreement with Maria. Okay. And then we went home alone without Maria. Jesus. On our, on our way home, then we remembered, ah, we came to church with Maria. Okay. Oh, oh why did we forget and we just left her? Okay. You know, so that, that was the beginning of, of, of my Christian journey. Okay. That so, Bishop. The... Yes. So, so, Bishop. So, now, it's, it's like we are going on a journey. Yes. So after all those activities, stealing, um, drinking, womanizing, smoking, and all this, then one day, one day, a certain lady called Maria came into your life, mm -hmm. right? So in an attempt to go and let's say, let's put this corn in the better comments, this lady, <laughs> <laughs> she led you to church. <laughs> so thank God for the life of Maria. Maria. <laughs> Thank God, whatever Maria, whatever you are, we want to say a big thank you for using. I mean, being a vessel in the life of Bishop Solomon. So you went to action. I mean, I, I, I'm at Bishop Dan, uh, uh, Duncan Williams, right? Yeah. yeah. So you went to the church. So yeah. your intention of going to the church was not to go and listen to the word of God, mm -hmm. but you went there purposely for Maria. <laughs> then something supernatural happened over there. <laughs> So what happened? Yeah, so we were we were arrested by the Holy Ghost, we were arrested by the Spirit of God, and 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 since then we, we never look we never look back, you know. But okay, uh on and uh I, I could remember I remember that time that one one of the most difficult things is to uh stop the smoking. And okay. so I, I was still you know, I was I still had some sticks of cigarettes in my pocket, you know. Okay. So I I kind of struggle with it for a while you know okay. but uh you know i believe god gave me grace and mm. i overcame came that habit you know okay so overcame, so yeah. bishop when you went to the church did yeah. you receive christ then and then when yeah. you went there yeah immediately yeah. you went there I, I was the first person who went to the fr to the for front to wow give, to give my life to no, they didn't even do what i call I was, <laughs> Do you kind of remember the message that was preached? Do you kind of remember? Uh, uh, I, I would. I, I it think, might be a long time. I think it was the woman with the issue of blood. Oh wow! Yeah, so and, we and, thank God for the life of Bishop. And you see, the Archbishop was talking about the Archbishop was talking about his old life, okay. how he used to go to Condola, how he used to mm -hmm. go to Keteke, how he okay. used to go to. Uh, Cave de Roy, I used to go to different discos and all that when he was on drugs and he was, you know, so it was like he was ministering to us. Oh, you, know, you could identify us. yourself. Yeah. yeah. So we identify ourselves, you know, with his old life. 
you know, Jesus. that is how come we couldn't hold back. Okay. So I, first, when, he's, when he, the preaching started, we thought maybe the guy, the lady has gone to tell uh, mm. the pastor about us. So the pastor, wow. said, you know, yes, that, that was how, but somewhere along the line, we said, no, this is, this is not, you know, because the power, this, there, was, there was power behind the word. There was power mm. behind the word. The power was so much we couldn't stand. We had to. We had to just go and surrender. So we surrendered to God, gave our hearts to Jesus, you know, and uh, it's it's been it's been different, you know. This wow. Story, our story okay. completely changed. Yeah. Okay. So now let's 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 continue from where you receive Christ mm -hmm. as your Lord and personal Savior. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I heard you saying that there was some kind of challenges, you know, at yeah, that time. You know, um, you, you couldn't easily give up, you know, the, 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 the smoking habit, you know. Yeah. Then, I mean, what about the womanizing? You know, when, uh, did you, did people see that there was a kind of change in your life? Because at least in your environment, your friends who knew you, I mean, they could say, ah, solo as for, I mean, solo, solo in those days. I mean, we will go womanizing with you. I mean, we smoke together. And, you know, what were some of the difficulties? That you started in, you know encountering since you received Christ in your life, you know from friends. I mean, I mean did they really accept the fact that you 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 were now born again, or they couldn't believe you? Yeah, when they heard it, they laugh. You know, they laugh. <laughs> they said, oh, they said, oh, solo. Oh, give solo, <laughs> give solo one week. Mm. Give him, give him one week is too much. Three days, give him three days. Jesus, you know, it was strange. I mean, they couldn't believe that. I could I could turn my life over to God. Mm. Amen. And because of the change mm. in our lives, something happened in the school. Mm. The Christian fellowship got started getting full. Okay. The, the whole room would get full because they said they were coming to see. They said Solo have converted, and he started coming to the Christian fellowship. Wow. Christian, what a Christian you? How do you call it? Something union. Uh, uh, um, uh, union. Scripture union. Yeah, so they say solo. This I we hear solo have converted or is going to the scripture union. So let's all go to the fellowship to see for ourselves. Jesus if solo is really converted. Mm. And they come mm. and they see me there worshiping God, giving my heart to God, surrendering to God. And mm. people the, the, the room was packed. It was okay. packed. So bishop. I mean, could you explain that part? I mean, I mean, what, what, what was so unique about your change? Or they couldn't really identify, it, you know, to the fact that you've changed. Was it because you were that bad, wicked, I mean, the notorious person in town, in the village, in the society? I mean, why? Why didn't they receive that, I mean, calmly? What was the problem? What, what, what do you think? Yeah, you know that time they call me the the, the my old this thing they call me Piso, you oh. know. Yeah, Piso, and when you call me Piso, then my walking change. Oh wow! <laughs> you, know, you know, it was it was very it was a you know I was a complete unique individual, you okay. know, a complete different individual, you know, in that school, you know, and and we will we will run from school, we will go to other schools, we are, you know. Jamborees, we are going on, you know, and all trips. I mean, travel out from the school, and we are having good time. You know, we are the world will say good time. You know, that's but right. It's, it's a bad time. Wow. It's a good time, you wow. Know? And we say we are enjoying ourselves, but life is rather enjoying us. Okay. We say we are having fun, but life is rather killing us. Mm. It, and that life, that life, I don't. Is is not recommended for anybody. Amen. That life will just will just destroy you and send you to hell. Jesus. You know? and, and so and so we, you know, we, we. I was I was that kind of individual that, you know. By the time they make roll call, they will make roll call at school. We will get to school. Uh, I remember one time we got to school, and by the time we got to school, they had already done the roll call, and so <laughs> we, were, we were brought to the front, and they gave us some lashes. <laughs> 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 they get, um, oh they, lord they, they, gave, they gave us some lashes you know we're all over the place you know oh. in the night in the night in the school sometimes we go to the neighboring village okay the, the, 
there's a neighboring village and usually when the moon comes out they play this drum dancing you know drumming and dancing and we go and mix with the villagers you know and we, since we know some of the uh, uh, some of the teachers okay they, go, they also come to the village so we'll just put the cloth you know we'll put a cloth and look like the villagers and we'll okay be, we'll be mixed with the villagers and be dancing among them dancing wow. among them. yeah and they, we pass them every time we'll pass them they'll come and pass but they don't know it's us you know wow. yeah, so it, it was it, it was you know it, it was it was a kind of a some terrible life that we were, we were living you know wow we, were, we, we thought that we were we thought that we were on, on the top of the world we thought that you know we we're carrying the world you know but actually the world was carrying us jesus know? and we so we were, so bishop yeah. after all these things mm -hmm. now after going through all these things yeah after yeah. the kind of you know things that you were involved in Mm -hmm. with your friends womanizing smoking drinking disguising yourself you know as a villager you know as part of the villagers you know you go there you know it's like you had a hard time let me put it that way yeah. so now let's come to the second segment of this discussion okay. my story is called okay. and that is taken from the first timothy chapter uh first timothy chapter one reading from the verse 12. he said that and i thank christ jesus our lord who has enabled me is that the part that i love so much about this scripture then he said that for that he counted me faithful so despite the fact that you were a drunkard despite the fact that you were a weed smoker despite the fact that you are a fornicator despite the fact that you were involved in all these things now he said that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry mm. So this brings us to the second segment of our discussion. So after you receive Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, most people did not believe in you. They thought, oh, that old solo, oh, solo, don't mind him. He will come back again. Let's give him a week, as you said. So at what point did you realize the call of God upon your life? Yeah. I mean, was it dramatic? Was it something supernatural? I mean, well, the call of God is always supernatural. But was it kind of dramatic? Were you about to do something that you had a voice? I mean, how did you recognize the call of God upon your your, your, your life? That is the second segment. You, you you know, in the world, in the world, I was I was so crazy. I was crazy, crazily crazy, you know. And when I came to Christ, Jesus. I also became crazy in Christ. Jesus, Jesus. I became crazy in Christ. I became I, I like a cobolo in Christ. Mm. Jesus, you know, cobolo in Christ, where I spent. I spent most, most of my time in the Legon, Legon Forest. Okay. Pray, praying, you know, praying, spending time in prayer, okay. spending time in the Holy Ghost, charging myself, okay. spending okay. time in the Word, you know. So it, it, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, my whole life, that is what I've been searching for. Okay. And, and, come, and coming to find it. Jesus. Made, made me like I was so much engulfed into it. That mm. I don't want any other thing anymore. Mm. I completely gave up everything mm. just for Christ. Like Paul said, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Jesus. He said, I count all things but dunk mm. for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. And being found in him, not mm. having my own righteousness, but the righteousness which is of faith in Christ. Mm. Amen. Now, so you realize that all all throughout my life there was something i was searching mm. my heart was searching for christ my heart was searching for christ so i can give my love to christ mm. you know and but i gave my love to other things thinking okay. that i could get fulfillment from okay. other things but those things never gave me fulfillment okay until i found christ and that is when i committed my heart my soul and my everything to God. And I said, for God, I live. And for God, I die. Amen. So my parents couldn't even comprehend Jesus. You know, my old life with my new life. Hmm. They knew I was changed. They knew I was transformed. But they thought it was another strategy. Okay. You know, but in time, they got to know that the man is converted. Hmm. The man is converted because every time, church, I don't miss. 
I mm. was like, I was like the church itself. I was living my life, you know, in complete compliance with the word of God and with the scriptures, living my life to serve God alone and nothing else. Okay. Now, so, so Bishop, Bishop, so for the purpose of uh, those listening to us, uh, I, 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 I could I, I I I could easily tell now that you are you are you are you are, you are really charged. <laughs> so my point is, you know, at what point did you recognize the call of God upon your life? Did yes, somebody sir. prophesy into your life, you know, because I want us to understand that part. Because after yes. involving himself in all these things, we all know uh, as of the night on the road of Damascus. You yes. know, that was when you know, yeah, the lightning when the Lord began to speak to him. And he said, go and meet, you know, one of the disciples, Ananias, you know, so the whole thing started over there. So in your, in your case, at what point in your life, was there any prophecy about you that you would become a bishop? Or, I mean, when you receive your, uh, Jesus Christ, your Lord, your Lord and personal savior in action, what would actually happen? How did you recognize the call of God upon your life? How? And, 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 and at what point? Uh, uh, Apostle, Apostle Eric. Okay. I never, I never received any audible voice. Okay, good. Any, any, I wouldn't say I received any audible voice. Okay. I, I didn't say I heard a voice from heaven or okay. I felt a voice from my inside. Okay. But what it is, is that my love for God increased so much. Okay, okay, okay. It okay. increased so much that I don't feel anything is worth my time, my Oh, energy. Jesus. And I don't, I don't feel that this world deserves me and deserves anything of me jesus I, I just came to a place where i felt that my love for god was so much that it was only god i can say jesus only god that i can follow mm. that's how my call came mm. and when so okay. when the when, when it became so strong mm. what happened was it even gets to the point I, you know i became uh, i became a pupil teacher i was okay. teaching at school Okay. And then I was I was doing this course in polytechnic, it's a catering and, and institutional management. Okay. In catering and institutional management, but you know I I was in the classroom, I was going to school, I was doing the course, but my heart and my soul and my mind was not there. Mm. My heart, my soul, and my mind was completely in God. Jesus. When, when I am with God, it's like my heart. Is at rest and I speak at peace with Jesus. Jesus. I don't. See, I don't feel the way. I don't feel a better, a much better. The way I feel when I'm with God is mm. is, 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 is is so satisfying. It's so fulfilling. I feel mm. that you know I I I am where I am supposed to be. Jesus. I feel that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You mm. know, so it got so bad. That sometimes when they give me my monthly salary, mm. I just go and put all in the offering bowl. Jesus. I put all in the offering bowl because I said I don't want I don't want to hear them talking about money. When I hear them talking about money, it, it does it doesn't do well with me. It doesn't you know uh, do well in my spirit. I feel that I mean I owe it a duty that whatever I have should be given to god amen there are a few times i drop all my uh paycheck pay you know pay envelope into uh into the offering bowl okay okay I had, I had to leave by faith for the wow. rest of the month okay so bishop now let's come to this part now we've understood that i uh, mean your your calling wasn't that kind of let's say somebody from you, yes, so but, from, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, pastor nyaku Okay, Pastor, Pastor Nyaku in uh, Christian Action Faith Ministry. Okay, he, he prophesied, he spoke to me, he just called me. Okay, he just okay. called me and spoke to me. He said, You have a public ministry, you are, not just, you are not just ordinary, you okay. carry you carry uh, extraordinary oil. So, oh, okay, you, you need to take good care of yourself because wow. God, is, God is going to use you mightily. He spoke, Amen. he spoke those words to me, you know. Amen. And, and I was in uh, in yes, in yes camp, yes camp. It's organized by Reverend Dr. Afriye, mm -hmm. you know, and the Yes Camp is, uh, you know, the Ministry of Yafka. Okay. And, and uh, in the during long vac, in the long vacation, 
in high school, we we uh, we, we 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 went to this uh, yes camp, and it was a practical ministry. We go out on the streets. We do evangelism outreach. We do uh, you know, and the whole the whole camp. They started calling me Glory. They gave me a new name. Wow. They were give, they, they were giving me glory because nothing is important. Amen. Not, nothing is necessary. My whole life was completely turned, you know, turned to him. I turned my heart completely to him, and I was in complete compliance, you know, to Man. his word and to his spirit, you know. And so at that time, we we decided, I decided, I made up my mind, I was going to Idahosa, Idahosa okay. Bible School, you know, uh -huh. so I can go and uh, pursue uh, an advanced course in uh, you know ministry. Oh, but, okay. But then you know uh, the Archbishop, Archbishop Duncan Williams. I don't know how he managed, but he picked the team in the spirit. <laughs> and when, he, when he picked, when he picked the team in the spirit, he said, he said, you know, boys, I'm going to start a school here, and you are going to be the first batch of my Bible school. Wow. Yeah, he just he just said it. To, he didn't know. We've not told him. We've not said anything to him. But he, but he picked it up in the spirit. And then... Great. So, yeah, so he, he, he brought us in, you know, to the school, you know, and, and, and then and we, we, we came, we started, you know, the school and went through, you know, the training, you know, the training at the school. So we were the first batch of Bible school students, you know, at the Christian Action Faith Ministry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we saw the beginning of the ministry, and so we we learned a lot from the man. I moved to stay in the house of the archbishop, you know. So wow. I was in his house, I was living with him and his family, you know, and I was serving him. I was I was I was doing laundry for him, washing, and you know how you wash after washing, you iron, you iron, fold it and pack it, you know. And I was, you know, I was also, you know, cleaning cleaning his his bedroom and cleaning his office you know responsible and you know that i was you know absolutely serving the man following the man and learning from the man what ministry is all about wow okay so bishop let's come to this part of uh of the segment uh, did you encounter any challenges now we are using paul paul as the case study yeah. i mean we all know paul went through so many challenges because I mean, Paul's life was, <laughs> Paul was some way guy, you see. So, did you encounter any kind of challenges? Because if you read the Bible, the Bible says that there was a time that, he, I mean, he could just bypass people and be like, ah, what is this guy coming to do? I mean, is he coming to kill us? People were afraid of him. So, even to a point that he had to some way disguise himself. Now, in your case, did you encounter any challenges? You know, from your friends, difficulties in ministry. Yeah. You know, somebody said that, what have you been through? What have you survived? So <laughs> ministry is your service to the Lord. And yeah. I, I I know it comes with challenges. Can you tell us some of the challenges that, that, that you faced? Yeah, Pastor, I, 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 I experienced a lot of, you know, uh, misrepresentation and all kinds of, you know, uh, betrayal, all kinds of uh, distant insults. I went through all kinds of things, but I want to, I want to, uh, you know, uh, re go back a little and talk about, you know, my experience, you know, with, you know, with my, with my parents, you know. Okay. Uh, my parents felt I have to go to school. I have to uh, uh, get involved in some kind of a career or something like that, you know. And, and so it was a challenge. It was a challenge. So they, they gave me a hard time, you know, they gave me a hard time because they felt that the best, the best thing that you were doing for me is to keep me in school and make sure that I had a career and stuff like that, you know. But I, I, I also felt that I, the, the only thing that would give me joy in this earth is the kingdom and the work of the of the kingdom, you know. And so that was my first, you know, you know my one of the foremost uh, uh, obstacle in the ministry, you know. So I, I really, you know, it was very difficult. It was very hard, you know, because when you're doing something without without the support of your family, without the support of your parents, you know, okay. it is it is very tough. It's very hard, you know, it's very hard. And so to, for you to be able to keep your focus and keep going, it's not an easy thing, you know, because uh, you, you, you are torn between two, you know. That's what the scriptures say, you can't serve two masters. That's what the, <laughs> that's what the, the, the scriptures say, Jesus said that you have to, 
you have to if you don't hate your mother your father your two your brothers your sisters uh, 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 if you don't hate them more than you hate me you are not fit for the kingdom you have to hate them and love god more you know and so i came to that place where i had to choose between uh, you know obeying the lord and obeying them you know following the lord or following them you know so that was one of the reasons why i moved in to stay with the archbishop and stayed with the archbishop you know so that i can maintain my focus and keep growing and keep increasing in the things of god you know and so that's that that's one of the problems i have with the, with the with the youth today that okay. they don't they don't have the patience to wait they don't have the patience to sit under you know the man of god so they can be able to be properly prepared properly made ready for the ministry you know most of the time run most of them run ahead of time and they mess up their life you know and sometimes you know we 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 the youth we have we we have we are so much in haste we are so much in a hurry that we always lose it and by the time we go ahead of our time we find we find out that we get into troubles that we cannot even handle we get into trouble and we find ourselves you know having issues that we can't even deal with why because we didn't have the time to wait and we didn't have the time you know to serve the man of god and be able to receive you know elijah elisha served elijah elijah he served elijah to the extent and elijah was a hard man to serve Hmm. Elijah was a hard man to say because he was hard. He was tough. You know, wait for me here. I'm going to Gilga. Wait for me here. I'm going to Bethel. Wait for me here. I'm going here. You know, but he said, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. I am going with you. You know, whether you like it or not, I'm going with you. You know, that must be our attitude. You know, when it comes to ministry, when it comes to ministry, you must be so determined, so ready to go through the pain so ready to go through the trials and the temptations and the things you have to go through to become what god have intended for you to be you know so it is a process but you need to put yourself in the process you need to put yourself through the process so that at the end you will always not be found wanting but you will be complete in him absolutely Amen. complete in him to Amen. be able to be trusted and dependent upon to execute and carry out god's purpose and mandate for your life amen 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 so now let's come to i mean the ministers of today you know you are a bishop you've established two many churches <laughs> you know so at what point you know did you realize that this i have to go 100 percent i have to give my all in all in yeah. the ministry at what point at what point did you feel that this is the time that i have to I have to surrender everything let go of everything now i need to become a pastor i need to establish churches at what point in your in, in your ministry well um right, right right away right away i felt that call on my life i felt that call in my spirit and so right away i was going that route going that route means i was trailing that way and going to fulfill that agenda for my life to go all out for the kingdom and so what happened was you know, uh, I went through the school, pastored in action. I pastored in action. Okay. Yeah, I established the third branch of action. Wow. At, at Teshinungwa Estate. So I was the Teshinungwa Estate branch pastor. You know, and so somewhere along the line, what happened was, I went to them, the Spirit of God was giving me a direction to go. And I went, I went there to see them and tell them well this is what the spirit of god is telling me uh establish one in teshi and establish one in nungwa so that the uh the teshi nungwa one will be a headquarters i said this is what the lord is leading me to do wow. and so and so and so they, they they immediately turned it down they immediately said no and so i went back to god i said god what is going on he said okay. god said god said if you work with man that is what happens but if you work for me that will not happen. You can obey me directly if you work for me. Amen. So that is the point at which 
I, I just said, well, uh, God, show me the way. Teach me. So God helped me to pick one of the Bible school students. His name is Samuel Latte. He's, okay. he's also now a bishop, Bishop Samuel Latte. Okay. So I pick, I pick him up and I started training him. And I took him to the branch several times, few times. I would take him there, make him preach. I would take okay. him there, make him share a word. I would take him there, make him sing. He plays the guitar. Okay. And so I'll tell you why. When when I saw that he was, you know, he was well equipped to handle the church, handle the branch. I handed the branch, I handed the branch to him and I resigned from action. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so when I resigned from action, uh, I didn't go straight to open a church because if I go straight and open a church, all <laughs> these people will be following me, you know. Okay, and I, all right. I want that, you know, I don't want that. So I rather went to work uh, with Global Revival Ministry. Okay. Uh, Reverend Ampia Kofi. Okay. Was, yeah, I worked with him for a couple of years. And I was there, you know, preaching, teaching, you know, I was teaching Sunday school, teaching, uh, uh, preaching, you know, uh, uh, leading the choir and stuff like that. I did so many things there, you know. And one of the things that helped me to find my place, my place in the church is in action. I was in the uh, outreach team. I was in the warriors, the prayer warriors. I was in the choir. I okay. Was, I was leading praises, you know, and I was, I, I, I put on so many hats, you know, because I didn't know where, where I belong. I didn't know where I belong. So as I began to ex, ex, extend myself and expand myself and, you know, put pressure on myself, that's when I began to know that I'm a preacher. Oh, wow. I'm not a wow. teacher. I'm not anything. I'm a preacher. Amen. You know. Yeah, so I, my, my, when I started receiving that direction to open churches and start churches, I realized that I had an apostolic drive oh, okay. to my, my ministry and my life. Okay, okay, okay. So now let's backtrack a little bit. So you sat under the feet of Archbishop Duncan, uh, uh, Duncan Williams. Yeah. Then you came to uh, uh, Reverend Ampia Kofi, right? Yeah. Okay, so right after Reverend Ampia Kofi, that was where uh, you 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 began establishing, I mean, your own church. Uh, no, I stayed with Reverend okay. Ampia Kofi, and so I I think I traveled somewhere. I think it was okay. Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Okay. Amsterdam. I went to Amsterdam, came back, you know, and when I, when I got back, then the Lord said, the Lord just told me, it is it is time, you know, the Lord told me it is time, and so that's when. That's when I, I resigned from uh, this thing, uh, from Global Revival. I went to Reverend Ampia Kofi. I told Reverend Ampia Kofi, uh, well, it's time for me to move on. It's time for me to launch out, you know, into my ministry. And so I left and then started, you know, the Agape uh, Missionary oh, Ministries. You wow. Know, started Agape Missionary Ministries. And uh, so I started a fresh, fresh ministry. Okay. Fresh ministry, fresh people, fresh souls, you know, uh, a race, you know, okay. race, fresh people, you know, to work with. And so as I'm talking to you now, I have sons all over the world. All like, over, <laughs> all over amen. The world, amen. Know, I was there one time where one one person, can, can, uh, uh, Apostle Ken Dapa, he, he, oh. called, he called me from, uh, he called me from, uh, from uh, Canada. He okay. From Canada, he said, "Is he said, Osavo, do you do you recognize? Do you recognize? Do you know me? Do you recognize me?" I said, "I said no, I don't recognize you. I don't know you." He said, "He said, oh, I was in your ministry when you were at Osu Akwaje, when you were, you were you were having church at Osu Akwaje. I used to come there, and I used to be, I was, I used to be pushing the truck when when we are coming to start church. I used to be pushing the truck, and I said, well, I don't remember, but if you." talk about truck and all that Osua Kwaje, then I know that you really know me, you know so we started speaking, we started talking he showed me pictures when he was young, you know, and I look at the pictures, I said this man, this the man has, you know, really developed and become, you know, great man I sent him to the churches in, in Ghana to go and preach a few times, you know he went there, ministered, you know great, 
great man of God, great, great man of God, you know, all over, all over the world, you know, all over the world. Okay, so Bishop, now well, uh, 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 Evangelist Kendapa is listening live. Yeah, he's also live on Facebook, <laughs> and uh, and I'll be having I'll be having an interview with him. So yeah, he's yeah he he is on my schedule. So he, he's live. Yeah, he's also live. Uh, yeah, he could identify with 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 what you are saying. Now, I want us to look at um, when you were establishing those churches. You know, I mean, let's say your first church. I mean, you know, you hear people saying that establishing a church is not easy, you know, yeah. bringing people to church, the finances. Did you encounter any challenges, you know, bringing people together, organizing them? What are some of the tip bits that you probably want to tell us, you know, the young ministers? Yeah, Pastor Eric, uh, it, I, I, the church church business is, uh, is one, of the, one, one of the most uh, difficult business, you know, in the whole world. People think that okay. church is... Church business is easy. It's easy money. It's never mm. easy money. I never, okay. had, I never had it easy. I had it tough. Okay. You know, had it tough because uh, it was not easy. You know. Okay. It was not easy. We we're using benches. We started with benches and we started with this conca. You know, playing okay. the conca, playing the conca. Uh, you know, and before you, probably you will get probably like a, a keyboard, a mm -hmm. keyboard, and maybe some uh, amplifier amplify then some microphone you know then you'll be doing it uh then you get something here something there you know <laughs> it will take it will take you years you know we, we started at osua kwaje the kickers from that place we went we went down to uh sangara spot in labadi sangara spot in labadi you know we were there for 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 a couple of months and uh, when they were doing this homo watching they okay they came to collect all our hard-worn uh, instruments. They collected all to the chief's palace. They seized it. You know, I'm telling you. And so we left Sangara Spot. We came to this thing, uh, uh, La, La Polyclinic. We were at Labadi Polyclinic. And Labadi Polyclinic, another doctor came. And when the, doc when the new doctor came, he said they should kick us out immediately. We don't belong there. <laughs> And by, by 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 God's grace, God gave us another. God gave us a place in Amen. the school, and so we moved, we moved quite a little bit. We moved quite a little bit, you know. But we were not shaking. We okay. Were not, we were okay. Not, we were still, you know, persistent, and because we knew what God had told us, you know. And one 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 of the one of my strongest points is prayer. Prayer mm. is my strongest point. Prayer is mm. my, prayer is my life. Oh I wow! Pray, pray. I pray like twenty four seven. I pray like 24-7. I mean, when you are living with me at home, you, mm. you, you only hear tongues. You Man. only hear tongues. Apart from the music, maybe you will hear, you will hear tongues flowing all over the place. Mm. You know, and, and so God gave me, you know, that ability of prayer, that persistency of prayer, that ability to stay in prayer, that uh, stamina in prayer. It gave me that ability, you know, to prevail in prayer and to Amen. move to prayer. Okay. Know? And my love, my love for God is what gives me the tenacity and the ability to remain and abide in his presence. His presence is what I love. If I don't, if I don't have the presence, I become worried. Amen. Because the presence is what makes ministry easy. Okay. Without, without the presence, the ministry becomes tough. The ministry becomes a, like a hard nut to crack. But you see, when the presence of God is with you, Man. there is always victory and you are always triumphant. You will always overcome. Why? Because of God's presence. Amen. The presence of God is what goes ahead of you. Now, that's why David in the psalm said, take not thy Holy Spirit from Man. me. Amen. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And Amen. presence is ministry. Mm. Presence is ministry. If you mm. carry presence, you carry what it takes to make ministry blossom. You carry yeah. what it takes to make ministry flourish. You need the presence of God to be able to make impact in your ministry and make impact in the life of man. Is okay. There's one thing that people cannot dispute they cannot dispute the presence and the power of god 
when you are ministering and you carry presence, people cannot dispute it because they feel it. Yeah, man. They cannot dispute it because it touches them. They cannot dispute it because it affects them. Why? Because the anointing is what breaks the yoke. The anointing is what brings the miracles and the signs and the supernatural wonders. I remember one time, a woman was brought to the house. And when she was brought to the house, I said I was in a hurry to go to church. So let me go to church and come back and come and pray for the woman. I was in the church preaching. When they came, they, they came from the house and told me the woman was dead. Mm. The woman was dead in my house. Oh, so full. The woman was dead in my house. Hmm. I, I just left the preaching to one person. I said, take over the preaching. Hmm. I ran to the house. The woman was lying lifeless. And this people tried to break her legs. This people tried to put pepper in fire to hmm. resuscitate her. And she was still as dead as never before. And so immediately I got there. I just asked them because they were all crying. Everybody was crying in the house. I said, everybody leave this place. Leave me with the dead body. Amen. And, they, and they all left. I, 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 I knelt down. I Jesus. knelt down. And one, one of the things I told God, I remember telling God, God, you know that your name is at stake. Oh, Jesus. You know that for this woman to remain dead will be uh, to tarnish your image and tarnish your name. It will not bring glory to you. Hmm. I started praying in the spirit. I pray in the spirit for 30 minutes and I call the name of this girl. Oh, Jesus. I called her three times and the third time she opened her eyes. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. She opened, she opened her eyes. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. She opened her eyes. Oh, Sofu. Oh, Jesus. That miracle was one of the things that God did. You know, there are certain encounters that when it happens, mm. your life can never be the same. Oh, Jesus. Your faith can never be the same. Your life Amen. Changes. Your faith changes. The level of your faith, the mm. dimension of your faith changes. Mm. It changed my life for good. It changed my ministry for good. Amen. I could believe God for any miracle. Oh, Jesus. I could believe God for any sign and wonder. I could believe God to, to work anything. I mean, I wasn't afraid to, to, de to declare things that I believe. I declare it freely because I know whom I believe. Paul said, I know he's able to do that which I commit unto him against that day. And so, you see, it helped my faith. It strengthened my faith. It gave, it gave power to my faith. And so it made me convinced. Amen. It convinces you that God has really called you. It convinces wow. you that the anointing is on your life. Amen. It convinces you that what God has said to you, he will surely bring it to pass. Amen. It convinces Hallelujah. you that the word, the word of God to you is true and it can Amen. never be a lie. Amen. It can never be a lie. Amen. 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 So Bishop, uh, how many churches do you have now? Now we have, uh, at the moment, we have uh, five five churches in Ghana. We have five five churches in Ghana. We have a church in London, and we have another. Okay. We, we we started one church in in Michigan, okay. but the, but the Michigan church, I gave it to uh, Pastor Albert, one Congolese pastor. Okay. Congolese pastor in uh, in uh, Michigan. You okay. Know, we we started one here. In, okay. In Indiana. Indiana. Yeah, in Indiana. Yeah. You know. Wow. But, but we have helped plant so many churches. You know, we have helped plant so many churches. The one one of the things that uh, is in my heart, I, I tell them, I mean, people people say they are bringing their church to uh, put it under me. I said, you don't need to put it under me. <laughs> I can help you. I can finance you. I can uh, help you to stand, you know, but keep your name. And okay. Do what God is asking you to do. What I'm concerned about is the kingdom. Uh, as long as you know you ascribe to the kingdom and to the principles of the kingdom, you know, okay. I'm ready to help you in what capacity I can, you know, to make your work, you know, fruitful and to make you effective, you know, in the things of God, you know. So, uh, also, so it's not about name. Okay. Name, name does not matter. Okay. 
when 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 God talks about church, God is not talking about name. Cool. God is talking. Uh, God is talking about you know uh, his church, his bride. Okay. Okay. Is the, is the bride of Christ. Is the bride of Christ. We must stop. We must stop taking uh, Christ's wife to be our. Mm. <laughs> Yes, the church is for Christ. The church is Christ's wife. That's, That's right. Wife. That's the wife of Christ. So taking the church and making it your own is like it's like taking Christ uh, Christ's wife and making it your wife. You know, it's like committing adultery. You know, it means it, it's like committing a what? Uh, no, it's like committing what? Uh, how do you call it? Taking somebody's wife. How do you call it? Yeah, adultery. Adultery, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. It's like taking somebody's wife, you know. So one one of the things I'll say to the pastors, leave Christ's wife alone. Leave the church alone. <laughs> Is it Bishop? I yeah, that list be I am not in Ghana. Uh -huh. the, church, the church tries on his own. The okay. church is taking it on his own. The okay. church has pastors. Uh, mm -hmm. the pastors are taking care of the church. I go, they honor me, they respect me as a leader, the founder of the church, uh, as the one that started the church, but you know, I, I I don't lord it over them. I don't I don't lord it over them. We do the church. We are we are a team, and we raise the church when we raise the people together. Amen. You know, and that's what I love about ministry. If ministry becomes you know like a, a a man's business, you know, a man's business, there is there is a question. There's a question mark. It is so. It is not yours. You know, it Bishop. Is not yours. Yes. Bishop, you see that leads me to. You see the the, the 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 other aspect of our discussion tonight. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, first of all, why is the body of Christ not united? You see, I was about to ask this question, but this your your remarks led me into that. Why is the body of Christ not united? Why? What's the problem? Yeah, uh, 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 Apostle Eric, uh, it is it is just it is just the human human aspect. You know, okay. human aspect that is kind of uh, gradually, you know, entering into you know the divine aspect. Okay. You know, we 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 are spirit beings, but at the same time, we are also natural beings. Okay. You know, and we ascribe to the to this our environment, but this is not where we belong. Okay. This is not where we should. Which should be, you know, we should be ascribed to. We have to ascribe more to the spirit than to the natural. Okay. It, and so, the more we, the more we ascribe to the natural and ascribe to the flesh, the okay. flesh always leads, leads, you know, into all those divisions. You know, mm. like young, young men waking up and saying, "I want to start a church." You know, why do do they go out and say they want to start a church? Why are okay. they the church? Is it God that spoke to them to start a church? Mm. You know, uh, but you know, one of the things that I learned, I was I was studying on on the on the on the works of the flesh. I I took the works of the flesh one after the other, and I was looking at the works of the flesh. And could you believe that I got to find out that breaking churches is a work of the flesh? Wow! Breaking churches wow. is a work of the flesh. It means that if you break a church, you are in the flesh. You are not in the mm. spirit. Jesus. It means that you can if if you you know breaking a church is like breaking part of the body. Okay. It's like taking the arm away, or taking the leg away, mm. or taking one of the fingers away. Okay. Now, so we have fragmented his body. His body is not, you know, a whole anymore, because parts of his bodies have been taken away. Mm. You know, uh, but we we need to come to a place. You know that there's no more order. Order when it comes to the body of Christ, there is no order. Hmm. There's no order because that we, we we need order in the church. Hmm. You know, Paul after ministering goes to Jerusalem to submit to Peter and talk hmm. to Peter and give report to Peter. Peter is not there. He doesn't know what Paul does. He's not with Paul on his missionary journeys. But when he comes back to Jerusalem, he comes to give report to Peter, telling Peter what exactly they are doing and what is happening, you know, in the places they go to. Mm. You know, even at the point that 
when they when the 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 hidden hidden received the gospel you know it was reported to them they had issues about it some of them felt that you know they cannot incorporate you know the uh, the hidden into the common world of israel uh, okay. they felt that it was wrong you know mm. uh, but one of the things that god told paul paul uh, paul uh, peter is that you can call that which i've created unclean Jesus. you can call that which i've created unclean who are you to show god which one is clean and which one is dirty which one is pure and which one is defiled who are you to tell god who is right and who is wrong mm. and so we have come to a place as a church where there is so much this organization of the body everybody feels he's right everybody feels he's, he knows there is something about this uh knowing stuff feeling that i know feeling that i know but the greatest humility that a man can demonstrate is to know but yet it's as he doesn't know mm. that is the greatest act of humility mm. you know but you don't know you know but you still listen ma'am you listen to learn you don't listen to respond mm. 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 we have come to a mm. place where the flesh rules the flesh reigns and we are moving in the direction of the flesh instead of the direction of the spirit why because we are not praying okay when the, when the church stop praying that is what happens okay we have substituted prayer for other things we have substituted prayer for other things when you read the book of acts chapter 6 the bible said that when the when the believers were increasing the Christian women began to criticize and say that they are not being taken care of that's right the, to the daily provision that's right they felt that they were being neglected they felt that they were not being taken care of you know but the apostles quickly picked that thing in the spirit and said let us choose men seven men of honest report full of the holy ghost and let them take care of this business whilst we give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word mm -hmm. now so you could understand that when there is no prayer you understand the things that happen in the body you find things happening in the body you find carnality rising you find carnality taking over the church you, the church is supposed to be a spiritual body it's not supposed to be a carnal body it's mm. not supposed to, supposed to be a physical body but mm. a spiritual body that is why the, the scripture said in the book of luke chapter 18 the bible said men ought always to pray and mm. not to faint men Amen. ought always to pray and not to faint you know and that when you when you read the book of thessalonians it said pray without season pray mm. without ceasing when the church ceases to pray there are all kinds of things that come into the church because let's 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 get it right mm. the church is made up of human beings the church is made up of human beings human beings are made up of both the spirit and the natural or both the spirit and the flesh and so if the human being is not ascribing to the spirit he's ascribing to the flesh mm. it's controlled by the flesh it's either you are in the spirit or you are in the flesh okay so you must determine who you uh, ascribe to or who you submit to or who okay. you give yourself to Hallelujah. okay amen so bishop the division, you know the division surrounds this aspect you know this aspect because for a man to feel that he is right and the other party is wrong and he doesn't want to deal with this person because he wants to be on his own and he he, he has a different uh, direction he wants to go a different direction and break the church and carry people with him it is it is it is destroying the body Amen. it is destroying the church Amen. You know, we must stop it it is not right Amen. It, is, it is not helping the church amen in the body of christ so helping the kingdom amen said, by this shall all men know 
that mm. ye are my disciples if mm. ye have love one Jesus. for another. Amen. Love for one another. Amen. So the love aspect is what we are losing out on. The love Amen. aspect. The love. Love. Amen. Amen. Love. Amen. Love. Amen. Love. Amen. A friend of mine said, a friend of mine told me that now it is more of church ministry than the kingdom ministry which should rather be the best uh, the, the vice versa we should be geared towards the kingdom ministry where we should see ourselves as one christ being the denominator who came to die for all of us you know so the moment we begin to be human centered you know for our personal gains that's where the division comes in you know that's where we want to do things on our own that's where we become divided you know, but Christ wasn't divided, as you said from the beginning. So the most important thing is that it should be built on love. So, Bishop, in fact, you've been a blessing to us tonight. Amen. Now, what would be your final advice to the up and coming uh, ministers of the gospel? You've been in the, I mean, you've been in the ministry for far too long. I mean, going to action. I mean, going to I mean, uh, um, um, Reverend Ampia Kofi. I mean, you, you've really toiled in the ministry. Let me put it this way: in the vineyard. Yes. I mean, some of us we've just started, you know, and uh, we are believing. We are looking up to, you know, some of you guys, those who have been in the ministry. But you are more than ten years old. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> you're more than, you're more than ten years. Bishop, we have more to learn. That's why. That's why we are so You have so much speed. You have so much speed that you know you you sound like 10 years mercy amen we thank god it's just by the grace of god <laughs> so wisdom of god amen we thank god so what is your final words to up and coming uh, ministers you know what how, how how would you uh, i mean advise them what would you tell them yes we are just uh, uh starting a ministry um we are we are starting a, a school and uh, okay we, we are um the name of that school is Leadership Edge Institute. Okay. Leadership Edge Institute, and it will be it will be starting very soon. You know. Okay. Um, our dean, our dean is Reverend Frank Frank Wayo. Uh, okay. Is is uh is very well learned and very you know uh, uh very uh, learned in the area of uh, training. You know. Okay. And one of the things I see is that. They train people, uh, you know, our schools train people theologically. Okay. But, but when it comes to other aspects, they are not balanced. Okay. When it comes to things like finance, they don't know what finance is. They don't know how to manage finance. Okay. You know, uh, I, I, I always say, I always laugh at ministries. As I said, they do Muche di ministry. <laughs> <laughs> when, when, they, when they take the offering and the tithes, you to take this, you to take this, you to take that. <laughs> You to take that. Then, then the senior senior most man will put the rest in his pocket. And say, okay, we meet next week. That's right. <laughs> you know, but uh, why I'm saying that is because people are not really prepared, you know, to be able to handle certain things when it comes to ministry. Okay. It, and people don't uh, take their time, you know, to be trained. You know, okay. and the training aspect is, you know, because if if we want if we want uh, to make impact in ministry. Then we have to look at the training. Okay. You know, the, 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 the minister, the minister is not different from the message. Okay. Wow. The minister, That's very the, deep. The, yeah, the minister can mar the message. Mm. He mm. can have the, he can carry a good message, but his life, character, and attitude can mar his message. Wow. Can intercept his message, can render his message ineffective. Mm. So we have great ministers. But the only reason why they are not being able to be effective and be impactful is because they have not taken time to build and develop themselves. Hmm. You see, the, the goal of every child of God, every minister and every believer is to be able to uh, conform to the image of Christ. You know, and for Christ to find expression in you hmm. so hmm. that when they see you, they don't second guess. They just hmm. know. This is a child of God. Amen. This is the redeem of the Lord. Amen. You know, we need a testimony back in the church. We Amen. need a testimony back in the life of, 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 of the ministers of God. Mm. Because mm. if we can get if we can get people 
who will, who will stand for the kingdom, stand for what the kingdom stands for. Uh, I believe that most of our problems and issues Amen. are resolved. Amen. Amen. You know, because the church, you know, the church is a very powerful organization. Mm. It's, a, it's a very powerful organism that God has planted on the face of the earth. Amen. And, and what the church, what the church has been equipped to accomplish in these times and this end time, uh, you know, uh, we we need we need to be able to have an effective training mechanism where we train people not just for head knowledge not just for theological knowledge but to train them to be conformed to the image of christ oh, and man. live that life that will challenge people so that it is not the the message that only ministers but also their life also ministers oh, now man. those are some of the mistakes that we have made in ministry you know and we we cannot allow the young ones coming to make the same mistake. The young ones will not make the same mistake. Mm. Actually, when I started ministry, I told myself, I said, I will not learn everything that I have seen my fathers do, but I will what? I will train myself to do differently, you know, than what my fathers did. Mm. And so what, what I did, what, what I did in ministry was that I said, pay all the pastors, whatever is left. If there is nothing left, it's fine. I'll believe God. But if there is something left, okay, I'll take the rest, that which is left. So that's what I've run. That's the principle with which I've run ministry. All okay. the pastors get paid, and sometimes I don't get anything. Mm. All the pastors get paid, and sometimes... No, it's not that I'm a fool. But you see, I own everything, but I don't own anything. That's right. The life of stewardship is a life of servanthood. Mm. There's a life that makes you always, you know, deny yourself, sacrifice. No, no, that that is that is the hallmark of a successful ministry. Sacrifice. Mm. You know, if you can get people to sacrifice, the kingdom can go forward. The king, kingdom can advance. We Amen. can get the kingdom, you know, running, you know, in a in a faster way to accomplish and fulfill the end time agenda and program for God. The Amen. world is looking for a church that is dependable, a church that can be trusted, a church that they can look up to. In time of adversity, in time mm. of trouble. Now mm. look at the time when the issues of this coronavirus came up. Now look at how people are running uh, uh, left and right, trying to look for solution. Meanwhile, the church is there, but the church mm. is being overlooked. Wow. The church is not consulted. The church is not being involved. You know, they, they, they started making you know this thing uh, uh, decisions without the consent of the church. You know, and these things ought not to be. We got to be the church. The church got to be the church in the world. The world have to recognize the church as a mm. place that they can run to when mm. there are issues and there are problems. The church has to have the solution and the world have to see the church as the solution to the things that are going on in the world. Mm. And Jesus and the, and the scripture said in uh, Chronicles, he said, if my people who are called by my name, mm. shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven their Amen. Amen. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their Amen. land. Amen. Amen. I completely. Hallelujah. Bishop, thank you so, so, so much. In fact, uh, we can't thank you enough. Hallelujah. You know, this is, uh, the book of Proverbs says that wisdom is crying on the streets. Hallelujah. Wisdom. So I believe this is, this is, I mean, this is, I don't know even how to put it, but Bishop, what did I can say is that you've been a blessing to us tonight. And uh, the good news is that this broadcast was not only live on Facebook, this broadcast was also connected to five radio stations at a time, at a go, right now. It is live on Receive Multimedia. It is also live on Wet and Spirit Network Radio. It is also live on Run with a Vision. Amen. It's also live on our father radio as well as live on Bahama radio. So yeah. this is live on modern Ghana. It's also live on Ghana Sky. It's also live on Garden Radio. So Amen. all this, this discussion, I mean, is all over the place. And uh, I believe that today was ordained that you will come and encourage us. I've been looking at somebody who has sat under the feet of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Start under the feet of our Reverend Ampia Kofi. 
I mean, had trained ministers in the ministry. See, these are the people that we need, you know, in this uh, end time, um, 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 no dispensation to encourage us in the things of the ministry. We want to say a very big thank you so much for honoring this invitation, and then may the Lord reward you. You see, one of the things that I love so much is the fact that despite all that you said, you said that the way that you were very wild in the things pertaining to, you know, earthly life, you brought the same zeal in the ministry. It's, and it's, and it's, that, that had really inspired me personally. And I could take root from that of Apostle Paul. Look at the way Apostle Paul was somehow, you know, radical in inverted comments. I mean, killing, destroying things. When he received Christ as Lord and personal savior, he was obedient to the call. And look at the churches that he established. And I believe that this is the direct route. Look at the churches that you've established. And I love the part that you said that you are not being selfish. You know, it is the kingdom ministry. So I personally believe that what is missing in the church today or in the vineyard today is more of church ministry than kingdom ministry. We shouldn't be so. Because it is Christ who had come to die for all of us. You know, and I believe that this is really an encouragement to all of us. I want to say a very big thank you so much. I could see a lot of comments on Facebook, Bishop. I can't even read them. Um, your wife, uh, Bishop Edith, you know, as usual, you know, a powerful woman. She keeps supporting. Amen. She even says something that, Bishop, you've forgotten the accident that you had with some people. <laughs> so you've forgotten about this. I could see your brother. I think your brother, Kofi Kudowu, says more grace. I could see um, Shanet Priscilla says, God's uh, richest blessing, men of God. I, I, there's so, ma so, so many comments. I can't even read all of them. But uh, those on Facebook, those listening to us live on the radio, want to say thank you so much for your time. This is Word and Spirit Broadcast. It is brought to you every other Friday. Every other Friday. So our next discussion will be on the 14th of August. And this time, uh, we'll be interview um, Reverend... Um, Rick Donko is a pastor of ICGC. I mean, uh, it's a pastor. Yeah, one of the sons of uh, uh, of Mensa uh, of uh, of Apostle Mensa um, Otabel is one of his sons. He will be telling us his story. He will be encouraging us, and we have a whole lot of people coming on board. Bishop, your son uh, Evangelist Kendapa is coming. <laughs> He's coming very soon. Good man. Good man. Yeah, yeah. He has a, a lot of story to tell. He one day he said that he said that evangelist. He said that he said God servant. The kind of thing that I've been through, you have no idea. He <laughs> tells me a lot, and I said, you wait, wait. Let us all enjoy and learn from your experience when you come on board. So I want to say very thank you so much. And also, I will be having uh Pastor Edith uh, Kudowu. That is your wife, and that will be on the twenty eighth. So on the 28th, I'll have Pastor, a great woman of God, to also talk to us. I'm pretty sure there's going to be some difference. Even though you're a husband and wife, there's always a big difference when it comes to the ministry. She will tell us her story. <laughs> and I believe, yeah, you see, she also said, she said, oh, Pastor Ricky was my youth pastor. That's, that, that's the comment that she just posted. <laughs> so, yeah, on the 14th, we shall have Pastor Ricky Donko. Uh, as our guest, then the following two weeks we shall have Pastor Edith Kudo with us. Then we have so many people. I mean, mm -hmm. in the pipeline. So God bless you so much. My name is God Servant Eric Obe, and I host a program called Word and Spirit. It's a teaching program on every Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and 7 p.m. GMT. A teaching uh program it's a discussion, it's a Bible studies where we all gather and we study uh the things of god god bless you so much for your time and also this if you go to face uh, uh if you go to facebook if you go to word and spirit um a network page there's a page where we have so many teachings and discussions and i also have my own personal radio it is called word and spirit network radio if you go to google play store you can download my app all this is under the umbrella of Racine multimedia Bishop, it is made up of about nine radio stations, wow. all under one app. So wow. as we are talking right now, that is why I could connect to five radio stations. Because we have nine radio stations under one app, and it's called Racine Multi.
media so okay, maybe i have to join you have to join us <laughs> so maybe if you are listening to us live and uh you, you i mean you are a pastor you are a broadcaster i mean you want to have your own radio yeah we can uh set one for you you don't need any lenses all that you need as you can see me is my headset my laptop and some one or two softwares then you can have your own personal radio it can go everywhere and your message can also be heard across board so you can contact me my number is 571 three six five one two five one if you are calling outside united states of america then you have to add the code zero zero one five seven one three six five one two five four and lastly if you are a gospel artist and you want to have your music being promoted please contact me i promote music i'm a gospel artist free of charge i play them on my tuesday pro program i talk about it i tell people where they can have access to your music if you're also a pastor and you want to advertise i mean your event just contact me it is free i don't charge my mind is a kingdom uh, minded so the gospel must go far so god bless you bishop and uh we are happy to have you today and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye, viewers. Until we meet again, it's bye. Bishop, thank you so much. Bishop, I'll call you. Thank you. Bye. Yes,